Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my November wrap up. Before I get started, I know that some of you knew that I was running for a public office, I was running for school board, and I lost. My race, there were four open seats, and I came in number five, which I think is actually pretty good, especially running for the first time. And I've learned a lot about the process of campaigning, but also a lot more about how our school board functions. Last year, some elementary schools had been closed, and many people were upset. So diving into this campaign and getting further knowledge about what the purpose of the school board is, what their purview is, really helps me understand how and why they make certain decisions. So while some people vilified the school board members, I'm not one of them because they're pretty cool people and they really do care about the health and safety of the students in our district. So it was a wonderful experience. And we will see in two years if I decide to run again. I don't know. I have other things that I'm hoping to do in the meantime. So with every campaign, if you haven't known a candidate, there is some depression and some grief just because you're not going to run if you don't want to win. However, I am not super competitive. So I think it's been easier on me than other people, but I still have to go through my own grieving process and feelings. So I think it's good that I have some other things that to keep me busy, like Specfist or the, or the self-published science fiction contest year three that is going on right now. So I'm going to do this a little bit backwards. I'm going to first do my writing wrap up. Because I knew that the campaign was happening and the election was happening in November, I had already mentally prepared to not fully write in November. November is normally NaNoWriMo month. And I had prepared to do a co-author project with my sister. However, she really wasn't writing and so it kind of stalled. We still would like to do it in the future, but we both have different things going on. And so this is just something that we'll talk more about as things go on and we could pick up at another time. I also picked up another project that I had started a few NaNoWriMo's ago. Um, I call it a second chance romance and started putting more words into that. And so nowhere near 50,000, I think maybe in the total of November, I wrote 2,000 words total, but that is 2,000 words that I did not have before, and it's given me some steam to keep writing, which is really the purpose of NaNoWriMo, is to help you get into a groove so you can see, yeah, you can write often. So that has been my November writing wrap-up. And for other media... We are watching Hell's Kitchen. We're watching The Great British Baking Show. Um, I've been watching Young Sheldon. Hilarious. I love it. So easy to binge, especially since it's only 20 minutes long each episode. And I don't know if I said before, but I did finish my elementary rewatch. Got all the way through this last season that I hadn't. And I don't know. I... It kind of feels anticlimactic. You could tell that the writers wanted to leave the characters in what they considered a good place by giving them all their dreams, or by making all their dreams come true. So everything that they've been hoping for, like Watson was wanting to adopt, well, she's now adopted and she's been a mom for a while. It was okay. It was an okay ending. If you need your endings to wrap up neatly and nicely with a bow on top, 
yeah, how this ends is great, but I don't know. For a mystery TV show, it didn't necessarily need that nice, neat wrap-up. So, on to my reading wrap-up. I finished 10 things this month, four of which are manga, one is a novella, and everything else is a novel, or novel length at least. So, starting, the first thing I finished was Chaos Terminal by Mer Lafferty. This is book two in her Mid-Solar Mysteries. And this is following Mallory Viridan. In the first book, she had taken up asylum on a sentient alien space station that only had aliens, had very few humans, because she's a murder magnet. Everywhere she is, murders happen, or she gets drawn into murders, and she was sick and tired of it. She felt like it was ruining her life, so she had requested asylum and gotten it. And in the first book, more humans are coming to the station. It's called Station Eternity, and she's freaking out because so she's like, somebody's going to die. That's, that's what always happens. So this is book two following the events of the first book. And she has a new murder mystery to solve. And some other people from her past have shown up. And I mean, overall, it was a lot of fun. I think my favorite characters are still the Ness. They are rock-like creatures and are a lot of fun. I mean, this is book two. I'm not trying to think of what I could say that would not spoiler the first book. And the mi murder mystery revolves around the people from her past. One is a detective that used to frequently accuse her of the murders that she was like attracted to. And one of the people she was trying to escape. And then the other two from her past are her best friend from high school and her crush, who happens to be her best friend's twin brother. And she finds when she sees them that she did not remember her crush at all. Like she had forgotten him completely, like that he even existed and that her best friend had a twin. And so she's kind of freaked out. And then the murder mystery happens. So I'm not going to spoil anything more. It was a fun ride. I'm really enjoying like the environment of this. Murder mysteries aren't really my thing, but because it's packaged with the sci-fi, then I am more interested in it. And I think I rated this the same as the first book. I then reread the Kaiju Preservation Society, and I did pr recently purchase my own copy, but I've loaned it to a friend to read, because I think that she would like it. And if you don't know what the Kaiju Preservation Society is about, it follows Jamie Gray, who at the beginning of the pandemic is fired from their job. And the only job they can get is as a food delivery person, which isn't great in time of pandemic. And Jamie runs into a guy that they once knew who remembers that he was really into sci-fi and offers them a job. And Jamie takes it because why not? It seems like it's going to be more interesting. And finds out about this whole other world where kaiju exist. And I'm trying to be kind of vague on Jamie's pronouns because it's never stated in the book whether Jamie is male, female, non-binary. Like, no pronouns are given to Jamie. Ever. You don't overhear a conversation where somebody pronouns them. So Jamie really is up to the reader of what you would like to do. And there is representation of the other genders in the book. And I just like the idea of humans trying to preserve kaiju, not only in the kaiju world, but also from other humans. It's kind of fun. I then finally finished The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. This is the first in an Indian inspired story. We primarily follow two perspectives. One is Priya, who is a temple child in hiding because all the other temple children burned to death. 
and that burning was done on purpose. Priya was one of the few that escaped. And then we follow Malini, who is a disgraced princess from the Empire. And Malini has been sent to the temple where the children have burned as basically for it to be her prison. And then Priya ends up becoming her maiden, yeah, her maiden waiting, lady in waiting, I'm not certain. And then Priya ends up becoming her maid to kind of help her and finds out, you know, Malini's being dosed with a substance that is slowly killing her. And this is definitely a political fantasy. And I found the world very intriguing and interesting and the magic systems, they're not in your face. This, this isn't a hard magic system where the reader knows the rules. This is more of a soft magic system. It, it's more based off of, oh, the character has an idea. And so then they try things out with their magic to see what happens. And not everyone has magic. So there's that as well. It's the first in at least a trilogy, if not a, a series. I'm not sure how many books are going to be there. I do know that the second book is already out, so I look forward to picking up the o Oleander Sword next year to continue Priya and Malini's journey. I then read The Inconvenient Indian by Thomas King. This was a book that my husband purchased at the beginning of November and read. He's working on building his indigenous collection. And Thomas King is an indigenous author. He is Cherokee, has lived in the States, and in Canada. So this is a nonfiction book. Um, the subtitle of this is A Curious Account of Native People in North America. So he's not going into a like date by date, you know, these are all the things that have happened to every single tribe, but he's talking more general and broad about the interactions between white people and Indians. He uses Indians, Native Americans, First Nations. He, he talks about how the acceptable term has changed and it depends what group you speak to. So, I mean, that's mostly why normally I say Native Americans because my husband says Native American. He's Kiowa. I just follow his lead on that one. I was going to say, I really enjoyed this book. But it's not so much enjoyable because it, it keeps pointing out that the abuses and tragedies of the past are still happening. The United States and the Canadian government are still finding ways to erase natives. I believe it was as late as the 80s that the Canadian government unrecognized several tribes in Canada. And so now these Native Americans, they're still Native Americans, but they're not considered status Indians. That's what they are called up in Canada. And so then they're not considered legally, you know, their own culture and heritage. It, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> like, it'd be like me going to you and just saying whatever your background is, that doesn't exist anymore. You're just a wherever you live person, right? And Thomas King talked a lot about how white society really likes the concept of the dead Indian, the Indian that once was, and they tend to not pay any attention to the live Indian, the living one. And we like, as white people, we dictate to Native Americans who they're supposed to be. Again, this book just kind of points out all the abuses and intricacies and difficulties and things that tribes are doing that are good. It's kind of set more by topic. And so you do jump kind of forward and backwards in history. But I think this book is great if you know nothing about Native American and white relations. I think this is great even if you do have a background. I mean, the more background you have, you're going to probably be reading this like, yeah, okay, know this, know this, know these things. But, for example, one of the things they talked about here was the native, there was a native movement that took over Alcatraz. And I remember on my honeymoon, my husband and I stopped by Alcatraz because it's a famous prison island. 
And that's when I first found out about that movement had taken over Alcatraz for a while. And he goes into a little bit more depth about that, but more as a overview, not in to hear the gritty details of everything, how it was working, that sort of thing. So again, I think this is a book that everyone should read. And so don't wait till next November, pick it up now. I then read When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Neville. This is the second novella in her Singing Hills series. And I had picked it up ahead of the Hugos originally because book three had been nominated for the Hugos, but I didn't get this read before the voting ended, so I didn't I haven't read book three yet. I really enjoyed the first one, and so I was excited to actually get to this. Um, and in this one, Chi, our scribe protagonist, main character, is going on their journey, and one of the mammoth riders is giving them a ride to a way station so they can continue with their journey, and on the way, they run into three women tigers, and she is trying to communicate with them because the tigers want to eat them. And she brings up a story of a famous tiger and this tiger's marriage. And the tigers at first are a little offended. And so she asks, well, you say I don't know the right story, so would you tell me? And they're like, no, you tell us, you tell us the story and we will correct you when you're wrong. But if you're wrong too often, then we are going to eat you. So this novella is this exchange of Chi telling the story as they learned it and the tigers cutting in with different perspectives or explaining some things that the humans don't understand about tiger culture. So it was really interesting. I, I do look forward to continuing with this series. Then I read some manga. I read book six, book seven, book eight, book eight, and book nine of Spy X Family. This is a series that I've been really enjoying about a spy named Ty Twilight who has a mission to get close to a man on the enemy side, but in order to do so, he has to do it through the school that the man's sons go to. So he needs a wife and a child, goes adopts a, a child, gets m married for convenience, and everybody in the family has their own secrets. However, the daughter is a telepath, so she knows that Twilight is a spy and that Yor is an assassin. And she's not interested in letting anyone else know because she's enjoying her family. And it's kind of that further watching as yours coming to balance. Does she still want to be an assassin? She's enjoying getting to be a mom. Even though, you know, her marriage, her marriage is for convenience. You can tell yours starting to fall in love. Twilight, who's going by Lloyd, just watching him as he works towards his mission. And, you know, he realizes that his, the daughter he's adopted, Anya, is not the brightest tool in the shed, but he's still working with her and learning what it is to be a father to a child. So I'm enjoying all the hijinks of this series. And then the last thing I finished in November was City of Broken Magic by Mira Bolander. This was a book I had picked out for the Buzzwordathon because it has the word magic in it. I think this was my October prompt. I was trying to do an all sci-fi list again and just could not find a sci-fi with magic in the title. So it's a urban fantasy set in an alternate world. This society is kind of like Victorian era, I would say. Victorian or, no, Edwardian, somewhere around there. 
uh, like they have trolley cars that act kind of like subways. They have trains. But at the same time, they have some like magical amulets for that people use for protection. Or if the amulets run out of magic or get broken, can cause it, what they call an infestation, uh, which is a creature that will suck everything up, eats people. If it grows strong enough, it will start to eat inanimate objects as well. And our main character, Laura, is an apprentice to a sweeper. That's what the people who go and fight these infestations are called. And she's been an apprentice for three months. And I think the man she's an apprentice to, his name is Clay. But I could, I could be completely wrong. It's C-L-A-E. And I know at first I was saying Clay, and then they had a thing where, no, his name is not Clay. But I'm not sure if I understood how to actually say his name. So we're going to go with Clay. I could be wrong. Um, the author does try to let the reader know how to say the name. I could just be overthinking it. Anyway, so Lauren Clay are... working to well, you know, take care of infestations. And in their city, the city the government has put out that these infestations like, don't just happen randomly anymore. They are, they happen because the mobs are trying to do, to assassinate someone. That their city is special and they, they don't have the same issue as the rest of the island country, where in other cities, infestations will just happen. Because of this, the sweeper unit in the city is a lot smaller. It's just the two of them at the start, whereas other cities have a bigger group. And sweepers in other cities are have better acclaim or are acknowledged by the people, and here they're kind of treated as riffraff. And, you know, I enjoyed this actually a lot. It was a very interesting urban fantasy. It was very interesting, like, how the magic works with the amulets. And there's a second mag magic system that's been mentioned, which I think we'll find out more in further books. But even just the relationships between the characters very much enjoyed this one I do think that did the synopsis on the back definitely gives away a spoiler for one of the characters and so I was waiting a long time for what said on the back to happen and it doesn't happen till the very end so I would say don't read the synopsis for this book before picking up because otherwise it will spoil you for the book. You should just go pick it up if you like fantasy, especially if you like urban fantasy. So in my last video, I did talk about that I was planning to read Goodbye to the Sun as a buddy read. Me and my buddy reader got 10 chapters in, and it, this wasn't working for either of us. So we both DNF'd it. I don't normally mention my DNFs, just I had happened to mention that I knew I was going to read it, and it didn't work out. And then going into December, I am currently reading Down Below Beyond by T.A. Bruno, which is one of my Specfest reads. And I've just barely started Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky, which I had originally wanted to pick this up because this series was nominated and I think it won Best Series in the Hugos as well. But I haven't read it yet. I know it's going to be chunky, so it's going to take me a little bit longer. But that is what I am currently reading. How was your November? Any good reads that you would like to share with me? And if you're someone from BookTube who makes videos, please leave me a link to your favorite books of 2023. I really enjoy watching those and seeing the variety. Even if you're not a sci-fi fantasy reader, I'd still love to know. Thank you and have a great day.